What would you change about yourself if you could? Two, three inches taller. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, William, how you doing? Doing good, bro. How's your prep growing? The prep is growing fantastic. Fantastic. We thought it would be a nice idea to do a one-on-one -on -one question with you. Mm -hmm. Are you up for it? So what's in the pan? It's fish, it's chicken, broccoli. I got rice there cooking. If you yeah. could live anywhere, where would it be? I would live at the same place where I'm living right now. Perfect. And in my older days, I want to go back to my mother country. Where's that? In Ghana. Describe yourself in one word. Hardworking family man. One word. Yeah, hardworking. <laughs> um, how does a normal training split look like? So you want to my whole training split the whole week, man? I thought it was gonna be a short question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Monday will be uh, back with. With biceps, Tuesday will be my chest. With triceps, Wednesday will be my legs, quads, hams, calves. Thursday will be shoulders. Friday will be my back thickness, um, traps. Um, Saturday will be off normally, and Sunday will be my legs again. Oh, wow, nice. What's your favorite muscle group? I love training legs, but it's not my favorite muscle group. What's your biggest fear? Lose everything that I work so hard for, you know, so that's, that's, that's my biggest fear because I worked so hard for it, you know, to handle it over to my children. So that's my biggest fear. What would you change about yourself if you could? Two, three inches taller. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was, that was a joke. Yeah. I don't want to be tall. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, at this moment, I don't want to change anything about myself. I think you should be happy with yourself the way you are. Uh, me looking like this, you know, it's, it's my work, it's my job, it's my hobby that I've turned into a job, you know, so um, that's what I do, you understand? But um, um, be happy with who you are. If I go back like in my teenage years, you know, I would have changed my nose, you know, because I got a flat big nose and uh, I used to get teased for that. So that's one thing that I would want to change. And even when I went to bed, I would put, uh, you know, the... Uh, how you call those things, what you put on clothes when you hang clothes outdoors. I know what you mean. Yeah, you know, most people know what I mean. So I will put that on my nose, you know, before I went to bed. And that's what you get, you know, when you tease other children. Understand? So it can affect people. And uh, luckily, you know, mentally I was strong enough, you understand, to uh, uh, correct myself on time. And uh, I never did any operation about myself. And I am, I am happy with the, the way I am. And I'm happy with my big flat nose as well. <laughs> That's a great answer. What's your hobby besides bodybuilding? Of I course. love shooting, but unfortunately here in Holland, um, we are not able to do that, you know. Uh, at least I don't know any uh, shooting range where you can just go and show your passport and you can shoot without having, you know, a whole legal process for maybe you know, six to one year, so. And what would be your biggest complaint about your job? Right now with the COVID, it was a bit, yeah quieter but the most thing that I hate is the travel you know when you are traveling alone and you have to stay like for weeks on different places then from one place to another place that's what I don't like so from different places without your family you know missing your family and staying too long away from home what's your proudest accomplishment yeah, all, all three of my kids you know, I feel blessed to have them, you know, because I know a lot of people in my environment, you know, they won't have a family, but, you know, it's not everybody is fortunate with it, so. What do you do to relax? Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> it's like multitask, sleeping, relaxing and growing. <laughs> What's the hardest thing about prepping? The hardest thing about prepping, as you can see, is getting your meals in. It's the hardest thing to eat when you don't want to eat, you know, um, to do stuff when you don't want to do. Who's helping you during your current prep? Doing my own thing at the moment now. You know, I have a lot of requests, a lot of coaches that want to prep me, you know, but uh, I know my buddy the best and um, 
I appreciate it if I can get advice from people who are like, you know, who are into the sport and who done this like often, you know, who prep people. You know, uh, any advice is welcome. If I can use it, I will use it. If not, I won't. You know, um, still friends, you know, so, um, but there's one guy now, you know, who like, who is like, um, he's not prepping me, but he's like a watching eye, you know, so I've built a trust with him that, you know, I, like once in a while I can send my picture to him and he can still be like, oh, okay, bro, you know, you look good. Or oh, bro, hey, uh, um, you should maybe slow down or you should speed, speed up, you know, so that's a good thing. What's the name of the last movie you watched? A movie? I haven't watched a movie for a while. Okay, what's the name of the last series you watched? Mokoro Mafia. Mokoro Mafia. Yeah. Very interesting in news in Netherlands lately, so... Um, yeah, but I uh, just love the series. I'm not with violence, you know. Um, you know, I'm, I'm totally against violence, you know, so... But it's just, it's just a series and, you know, it's just fun to watch when you have nothing to do. Perfect. Would you rather ride a bike, ride a horse, or ride a car? A horse is one thing I would never do, you know. I feel pity for the horses. I know they're strong, you know, but a horse I will never, you know, I won't. Mm -mm. You'll bring his know. back. Uh, or you <laughs> will bring, bring my back, you know, kick me off his back, you know. So, no, a horse, no. Um, a car or a bicycle, you said? Yes. I would rather drive a car, man. <laughs> like, bicycle. Why would I drive a bicycle if I can drive a car? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A oh, car is way much faster than a bicycle, can get me quicker to the places I want to be from A to B, so... True, but I, a bike I'm, is like cardio session. I'm, I'm, I'm going... Uh, that's good if you need the cardio, <laughs> but... <laughs> what if you don't need the cardio? You know, so. uh, next question. How old were you when you started bodybuilding? When I started really bodybuilding, like doing competition, I was, I think, 26, 27. Walk us through the first time you ever stepped on stage. How was the experience? I had to get used to it, you know. I was all alone by myself. Uh, my coach wasn't allowed to get into the USA. Um, a friend was with me, uh, Robin, with his son and another friend of his. And uh, luckily, another friend of mine, Tony Griff, you know, he used to live in Holland, but he moved to um, um, Austin. So um, he came to see me, and uh, he like he drove like hours to come and see me, like three, four hours. So um, uh, that was like a great experience. It was in Texas, Dallas. Yeah, and uh, it was with a 212 class, and I got third place. Um, I think the one who won was David Henry, and then you got a uh, Tricky Jackson, and I was third. Yeah. Who's your favorite bodybuilder of all times, and why? I will go for Arnold, because if not Arnold, I wouldn't even know what bodybuilding was. You understand? I think most people who are not like into the sport, you know. Through Arnold, they know about bodybuilding, you know. So I think he he he's the kind of pioneer, and you know he opened doors for us, and he made people understand, you know, what bodybuilding is about. If like I'm looking at it at a global way, and all the uh, accompli accomplishment that he has achieved, you know, throughout his career, a movie star, you know, um, a governor, you know, so I will go for him. Yes. Yeah. He put bodybuilding on a map. Definitely. Uh, how did you how did you get your nickname, the Conqueror? That was with my ex coach Neil. You know, we were like sitting, and he was like, "Hey, you need a nickname." You know, I'm saying, "Okay." First thing what came up in me was William the Conqueror. I read about that book, you know, in my younger years. I think there's even a movie of it, you know. So, and I know the background of it as well. And uh, so I was like, "Okay," you know. And we are, yeah. So I was like, "Let me go for that name." My name is William anyway, you know. So. Why not really? I'm the conqueror, so, you know, so I still got my, you know, uh, legend name and, you know, just the conqueror added, you know, so uh, it, it fitted me more, yeah. How did you become so disciplined? The discipline comes from my mother, definitely. Um, my mother, you know, she, she, she worked her butt off, you know, like with all kind of jobs, you know, and, you know, to raise us up, you know, three children, um, you know, single mother, you know, and, um, so I got a discipline for her because I always felt embarrassed, you know, when I was like even sick, I took off, you know, from my job and I was sick that time that I was living home. And then, you know, I was sleeping like, you know, to like maybe 12 o'clock and then I saw my mom, you know, coming from a job, you know, around one o'clock, you know, and I have I still, you know, took a bath, nothing. And I saw her walking, you know, with the groceries in the hand. I'm like, nah, you know. And she's a woman, you understand? I was like, nah, man. So I felt embarrassed and I was like, nah, I gotta do better, 
you know, so um, uh, that, that because I always had a discipline, you know, but at times, you know, as kids, you know, you're just lazy, you know, you don't want to do everything that you're supposed to do. But seeing those kind of things from my mom, that motivated me more, you know, like to do my best and to make sure that she gets an easier life, you know, in her older days. If you could only eat one meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? Then it will be no meal. No meal? Yeah, better live with nothing than live with something that, you know, you can't, you know, because what, what can you do with it? It's just one meal every day, the same thing, yeah. you know. So then I'd rather live without it than to have to live without it and be, you know, uh, dependent on it, you know, so. Would you rather win the lottery or work at the perfect job? Everybody wants to win the lottery, you know, but it's just what you do with that lottery when you win it, you understand? And um, being realistic as I am, I will always choose for a job as a priority. And the lottery, you can always win between the time, during the time that you're doing your job. And if you miss it, you still got your job and you still got your paycheck at the end of the month. So I will go for a normal job and then with that money, I can pay some lottery and who knows, if God bless you, you might win some. In the evening, would you rather play a game, visit relative, watch a movie or read? Visit relatives. Uh, if money was no ob object, what would you be doing all day? Um, traveling a lot, you know, for uh, good causes. Trying to build schools, you know, for uh, street, street guys, street children. I'm from the street myself, so that's one thing that I would want to do, you know, to help those street guys that everybody, who everybody gave up on, like, ah, pff, you know, he, he, wound up, he wound up like nobody, you know, so, yeah. What's your favorite zoo animal? A lion, because he's the king. A lion and a gorilla. Silverback. Yeah. Those look impressive to me. Yeah, man. <laughs> uh, if you could share a meal with one individual, living or dead, who would it be? I would go for my uh, biological father. The reason why is because um, um, when I left Ghana in 87, 1987, um, I didn't see him until 1993 to 94, you know, like, you know, like that I saw him that I knew like, okay, this is my father. And I was at that age that I knew like, okay, you know, he's my dad and I'm his son. And I always promised him, you know, when I used to visit him, I, he always say, when you go back, promise me to write me. Don't forget about me. And I said, yeah, yeah, I won't forget about you. And he said that every time. And when I left in 1994, I was so happy to leave, you know, from there because I went there for punishment, you know, for my, through my mom. So um, when I left in, uh, in 94, in 97, 98, I got incarcerated. And in 2000, you know, like I think in 2000, around April, May, my father died, you know, and then it hits me, you know, because he always, you know, I had like enough time when I was in prison, you know, to write him a letter. You know, but I never did, you understand? And once he died, you know, I really felt like regret and sorry, you know, like, you know, I should have just write him a letter to make his day, you know, to, because I know how it is as a father right now, you know, when you have a son, you don't see him, you know, uh, the missing of your son. And I know it also through my older brothers, you know, so he's one person that I would definitely have a dinner with. Definitely at this moment, at this age, you know, the way I think right now. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time. I think we would like to sum it up with one last eight question. What would you like to be remembered for? I would like to be remembered for um, the guy who never gave up. I would like to be remembered for the guy who had nothing, who came with nothing, who had nothing. The guy in who nobody believed, you know. Um, the guy who was born not to make it, you know, but he did. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah. We really enjoyed having this conversation with you. Yeah. We're going to have you enjoy your meal. Yes. And, and guys, don't forget to go to my channel, William Bonac and Gorilla Wear, and don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>